All right, so um, what I started was the, the recorder. So I'm going to start recording this lecture on uh, 3D modeling. So what we've done is we've set our workspace to 3D. And uh, there's a couple of 3D uh, options here. One is 3D basics. Be sure and choose 3D modeling. I think it gives you the best set of tools for what you'll need for these assignments. But you'll also notice that when you choose 3D modeling, you lost any toolbars you had and you also lost the menu bar or the that you had right up here and so what you'll want to do is select this down arrow here and choose show menu bar again and that way you'll have your format tab which gives you your option to go to your text uh, format and things like that if you want to open toolbars you can choose on tools and go to toolbars and go to AutoCAD and you could choose draw for example and it would open up the draw toolbar and then remember that once you have a toolbar open all you need to do is move your cursor onto it and right click and it will open up the list of all of the toolbars so if you wanted to open modify uh, you could put the modify in now what what it did in my case was it put modify right underneath the draw toolbar uh, but you don't have to open these up because you have these tools right up here. There's a draw panel and in order to see all the tools you may have to pick on on this down arrow right here. And there's also a modify panel up here that has your normal modifies like copy and trim and move and everything else. Alright, so that's how you get your environment set up. Now, I want to point your attention to something over here on the right at the top. This is called the View Cube. And uh, all semester long, even though you may not have realized it, we have been in this top orientation. And when your orientation of a view is in top, uh, that means you're normal to the XY plane. So if we look right over here, we see our, our X and Y plane. And so we're just looking straight down on a 2D drawing. All right. Now, I'll show you something about the view cube. If you move your cursor around on it, you'll see there's a little house right here. And when you pick on the house, that takes you to what's called the home view. So when I click on that view right there, you can see how things change in my view. Uh, looks like you guys may be having trouble seeing some of the things that I have. Let me see if, yeah, they're lighting up. <clears throat> Pardon me. Anyway, the view that we have right now, if you look on the view cube, is you see that corner right there? If you picked on that corner of the view cube, the view that you would have would be what's called a southwest isometric view. If you picked on this corner over here, on the opposite corner, it would spin around. And what you would have in that case is uh, what's called the southeast isometric view. Okay, so I prefer to work from the southeast isometric view and when I'm doing 3D. And you can also see that now when we're in this view that you can see the z-axis. And uh, this is important because when we extrude things, we always extrude along the z-axis. Okay, so let's see if I can get these lines any thicker. It doesn't look like I can right now. Um, I hope you can see what I have on my screen. It'll definitely be in the video. I can, I'm, I'm looking at what kind of what you're seeing and it looks pretty light right there. Okay, so let's talk about 3D. Uh, the way I would turn this particular 2D object into a 3D object is this. I would make a copy of this base right here. And uh, <clears throat> okay, good. So Kyle tells me that he can see it clearly. That's that's good. So what I would do is I would make a copy of this base, and I would also make a copy of this shape right there. All right. So I would just select those and go up to the copy command and pick on that, and then it's going to say select a base point. Just pick a point someplace, and let's just move those out over here someplace into space and then press escape so it looks like I've already got one here but I'm going to delete those guys out so I have the two copies that I made and so now what I want you to do is if you have your textbook 
I want you to look at this. This is actually the first assignment you're going to do. And I want, to, I want you to look at page 397. And what we're going to do is look at the sketch on page 397. And we're going to look at the dimensions that we have there. And we're going to think about, for example, this space, this uh, base that we have right here. If you could extrude that straight up into a solid model, how far would you want to extrude it? So if you look at that shape uh, in the front view there, and then you see the depth of that, it says 3.0. So hopefully everybody sees that. So here's how you would extrude that up. And so this will make more sense when you see me do it. Right up here, you have a command called press pull. You also have a command called extrude. Uh, what I recommend using is press pull. You pick on that and it says select the object or bounded area. So we're going to pick inside that shape right there. Just pick and then drag your mouse straight up like that and type three and press enter. And what that did is it created a three dimensional extrusion of that shape. All right, so it's pretty easy to do. Now I'm going to do an undo and show you something though. If you use extrude to try to do that same thing, first off, you'll have to window everything and then press enter. And when you try to extrude it, look what happens. It extrudes hollow. All right. But when you use press pull and you pick inside there, AutoCAD is smart enough to know that this is a bounded area that you want to extrude into a solid. So you just type the three and press enter. All right. Now there's a way that I could fix that and, and extrude it using extrude. And I'll show you a little bit more about that here in a minute. All right. So now we're going to look over here at this and we're in press. We pick on press pull and we pick inside here and we move that up. And so look at the sketch at the top of page 397. So what's the dimensional value? What's, what should the Z axis be? And remember, we always extrude along Z. Well, I see a dimension 2.250. And I'm going to press, I'm going to type that in and press enter. So there I have that extrusion made. Now, all I have to do is rotate these guys around and set that on top of the base and, and then union those together, which I'll show you how to do. But I'm going to go back and do a, an undo and show you what would happen if I use extrude. If I use extrude instead, first off, it doesn't find an area inside that. So I have to window all of that and press enter. And look at when I extruded, it's hollow. Okay. Now here's how you, and that's not what we want. We want a solid model. So here's how you get around that. If you're going to use the extrude command, what you have to do is region this area first. And the region command is under the draw panel. So if you pick on draw, you see this tool right here that says region. It's also right over here. And uh, so I'm going to pick on region and it says select objects. I'm going to window all of that and press enter. Now see when it's regioned, it changes color and it looks like it's filled in. And now if I use extrude, I can pick that and enter and I can extrude it as a solid. All right. So I would type 2.250. But if I use press pull, I don't have to region it first in order to, to make my 3D model. All right. The next thing I want to do is rotate this base so that the bottom of it is sitting on the XY plane. Now here's my XY plane. Now one thing I'm getting um, that looks a little funny is that AutoCAD can show you sort of a perspective view of this and that's what I'm getting right now. So I'm going to go over here and right click and you see that it's checked and it says perspective. So I just right clicked on my view cube. I'm going to choose parallel and watch what happens to those models. You see how they look just like isometric views now. They don't have any perspective to them. And so they look more natural when they're when you have parallel set. All right, so I, I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees so that the base sits on this right here. 
And in this one, I have I can't use the regular rotate command, but on the modify toolbar now, I have 3D rotate. So I'm going to pick 3D rotate, and I'm going to pick that object and press enter. And then I'm asked to select a base point, and I'm going to pick a point right here because that point is sitting on the XY plane. So I'm going to pick right there. And what's going to happen when I rotate this, this part is going to rotate around that point. But even more than that, <clears throat> AutoCAD wants me to select the axis that this is going to rotate around. And what I want it to rotate around, if you look at the X axis here, imagine that you had an ellipse and you were, you were spinning around the X axis. That's what we want to do. We want to spin 90 degrees around the X axis. So when you choose the uh, 3D rotate command, you get this nuclear energy looking symbol here. And what we want to choose next is the ellipse that would be around the axis that we want to rotate on. So I'm going to come right here and pick on that ellipse right there. And now AutoCAD prompts me to specify the angle. So type 90, 90 degrees. And remember, AutoCAD rotates counterclockwise. So if you imagine that going counterclockwise, 90 degrees would be a counterclockwise rotation. So just press Enter. And I rotated, rotated that 90 degrees. Now, one thing about that, if I go to the top view, you can see that it left behind that 2D geometry that I had. I'm going to move that right now. Just move that over here. So when it made the 3D model from that shape, it didn't subsume that shape. It retained the shape, so I still have that. All right, now I need to go back and get into that view where I can see this stuff again. And so I can go to the home view here, and that will bring me back to what's called a southwest isometric, but I prefer the southeast isometric, so I'm going to go over here to this corner of the view cube right there and pick. But another way to get the southeast isometric view is to come right up here in the view panel and pick on this down arrow where it says unsaved view. And you see this SE isometric? That's how you get southeast isometric. You can click on that. And that's what, a, what I have right here. Now I'm going to right click on the view cube again and go back to parallel. Now let's talk about what southeast isometric view means. What it means is that if you were standing right here and your head was up here on the z-axis someplace and you took a step back, if you thought of this x and y thing and y was north and negative y was south, if you were standing right here and you took a step backward, you would be you would have taken a step back to the south. And then if you took a step to the right, you would be taking a step toward the east. And then if you look back at your view, you would be looking at it from the southeast. And that's what this means right here, southeast. So if we do the same thing, we go to a southwest isometric. What we imagine is we're standing here at our UCS or our origin point, and we take one step backward, and we take one step to the west, and then we look back. This was what a southwest isometric view is. The reason I don't like the southwest isometric view is when you're trying to rotate things from this angle, things are going to seem backward to you. Where when you're looking at it from the southeast, when you rotate uh, counterclockwise, will look counterclockwise from the southeast. The reason I say this is that this is something, knowing that southeast isometric is the better view, I don't know why AutoCAD the first time you pick on the home view here takes you to the southwest isometric. That doesn't make a lot of sense. I think it should take you to the southeast isometric. So if you want to change your home view, go over to your view cube and just put your cursor on it and then right click your mouse and go down here and pick set current view as home. And what that will do is the next time you pick on the home view, it's going to keep you in the southeast isometric. All right, so remember the last thing I did was I rotated the base 90 degrees. Well, now I need to rotate this guy 90 degrees. So I'm going to pick on my 3D rotate. I'm going to pick right there and press Enter. 
and it says specify a base point. I'm going to pick this point because that's on the XY plane. It's sitting on the XY plane. I'm going to pick right there. I'm going to pick this ellipse because I want to rotate around my X axis. So I'm going to pick on that. I'm going to type 90 and press enter and it rotates like that. All right, so now you have to use your spatial reasoning. If I set this piece on top of that, would it be oriented correctly? So if you look at that model on page 397 and you look at these two things and you imagine, okay, if I set that right on there, would it be pointing in the right direction? And the answer is no. <clears throat> Pardon me. This guy needs to be rotated one more time. And so we go back to the 3D rotate and we pick on this part and press enter. And again, I'm going to pick at this corner right here because that's sitting on the XY plane. I'm going to pick right there. And now I want to rotate this around in this direction so that the front edge of that is facing over here. And so if you look at your X, Y, and Z, the rotation is actually going to be around the Z axis. Okay, you're spinning around the Z axis. So you want to choose the ellipse, in this case the blue one, because you're going to spin around that axis right there and type 90 for your angle and press enter. And now you have it rotated around in the right direction. So I had to rotate that twice. Okay. Now what I want to do is move this guy. So I'm going to pick it and pick the move command. And it says specify a base point. I'm going to pick the midpoint right there on the front edge. So I have to have the object snap for midpoint on. So I'm going to pick on midpoint. And now it says, where's your second point of displacement? Which is how engineers say, where do you want to move that to? Where I want to move it to is right here. You see that midpoint at the top of the base? I'm going to pick right there. And so what I did was I moved that piece and I set it right on top of this. Okay. Now, when I move my cursor on there, you can see when I pick the base that it turns blue. And then when I pick that top piece, it turns blue. So those two pieces are still separate. And the next command that I'm going to use is going to join those together and make this one 3D model. And so there's a uh, option that we use. This is called a Boolean function. And the one we're going to use is called Union. All right, so what we're going to do is union these two pieces together. So we choose solid union and it says select objects and we can pick this piece and we can pick that piece or we could have windowed them both or whatever. So we select both of those and we press enter. Now we don't see anything uh, different about them until we try to pick on them. And now you see that they act like one object when we pick on them. They, you pick once and the whole thing is uh, selected. All right, to finish this model, we need a hole through here and we need a hole through here. So I want you to look at your model and think about what would the diameter of that hole be and how deep would that hole have to be, all right? So we look and we find those dimensions and it says two times diameter 0.875 and if we were drilling those, we would be going through the base. And the height of the base, it says, is 0.88. Okay, so the height from this surface here there to the bottom surface would be 0.88. And so here's how we're going to put those in here. I'm going to use a trick. If you go over here to your top view, you've already drawn two circles that are 0.88 in di or 0.875 in diameter. So if you do a press pull on those and you just take them and you could just move them up like this and type 0.88, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to just come up, I'm going to exaggerate, and I'm just going to move and make them tall like that. So I know that's a lot taller than 0.88. And I'm going to pick in this one and I'm going to drag it up. And I'm not going to worry about making their heights exact. As long as those two cylinders are taller than 0.88, they're going to work in what I'm going to do. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is use the move command. And I'm going to pick this cylinder and I'm going to pick that cylinder because I'm going to move those over onto my 3D model. So now that I've picked those, I'm going to press enter. 
and AutoCAD prompts me to specify the base point, I'm going to go to that corner right there on my 2D top view. And then I'm going to look at my 3D model and I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to go to this corner right here on my 3D model. And what that did is it moved those two cylinders. Now the cylinders or the circles are still showing up over here, but those cylinders are here and because I moved them to that bottom edge, they are going through the object. And so the way that uh, we make a hole in an object, we use a Boolean uh, algebraic type thing called subtract. And we're going to subtract the mass of this and the mass of this from this mass down here. And when we do this, our 3D part would actually weigh less and it would change its center of gravity and it does a lot of things. And AutoCAD is smart enough to know something about that, believe it or not. So an engineer could use AutoCAD and do some uh, finite element analysis here once they make, you know, once they make changes to a part. Uh, but AutoCAD's not a good program for doing that. Programs like Inventor and SolidWorks are much more robust when it comes to stuff like this. All right, so what I want to do is subtract these two cylinders from this base part right here. So what I do is go up here to Solid Editing. And instead of union that I used before, this time I'm going to use the next one, which says solid subtract. So you pick on that and it says select objects. Pick the big piece first. That's you. So the first thing you choose is what you're subtracting from. So we pick that and you'll see that AutoCAD still is saying select objects, but I've selected all the objects that I want to subtract from. So I press enter. And now it's saying select objects, but what it wants to know is select the solid surfaces or regions that you want to subtract. So you would pick this cylinder and you would pick this cylinder and you press enter. And what it does, it subtracts the mass of those two cylinders from the mass of your base part. And just to prove that it goes all the way through, you can go to your top view and you can see that you're looking through those holes all the way through down to your XY plane. So again, I can go back to my home view now because I've got that set to Southeast isometric, or I could go up here and choose Southeast isometric. All right. Now that I've got that 3D model made, I really don't need all this 2D geometry anymore. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the 2D geometry and I'm going to use the move command. I'm going to move it. I'm not going to get rid of it. I'm just going to move it over there. And then I'm going to pick this part and I'm going to move it. I'm going to choose that corner. I'm going to just move it over here. All right. So you can still see my UCS, my user coordinate system. This is still plane OX and Y, but now we can still, still see Z now. And now I'm going to come down here to my... Um, uh, paper space layout tab. Now this one is named 3D view. I'm going to pick on that and you can see that I can see my 3D model. Now I'm seeing that 3D model because I have a viewport, right? If I didn't have a viewport, I wouldn't be able to see that model. So I'm going to delete this viewport out and you can see that my model went away. That's because I don't have a window back into model space anymore. So just as a refresher, if you type V ports and you press enter and you choose, in this case, we're going to choose single viewport and then pick OK. And then just pick outside that white paper and pick down here. And you can see that what we get is a viewport that shows us everything that we've done back in model space. So what it's giving us is a zoom all. So if you double click inside there, that puts you into model space. So you can drag or pan this guy over. You can zoom in a little bit and pan it over. And so we want to get it to a, to a scale that makes sense. All right, so here's how you get it to a scale that makes sense. Right now, I'm in model space because I double clicked inside there. So that means I can't change my title block or any of that stuff. I need to come down here and pick on the word model. I think that's blocking that. I need to come down here, hang on, and pick on the word model 
or double click out here in the gray space. So I'm going to pick model and that puts me into paper space. Now my viewport is in paper space and there it is right there. I can pick it and now what I want to do is scale this model by going right down here on my status bar and picking on that down arrow and coming up and trying some different scales. So first I'm going to try full scale. So a 3D model at full scale. Okay, so see that could fit. You know, if it went outside the bounds of the border, that would be too big. So I'm going to come up here and pick again. Let me try half scale. So you can see that's what half scale would look like. And two thirds scale, that's two thirds actual size. So the thing is that you want to try some different scales and get it where it looks good and then fill out your title block and get all this stuff filled out like you normally do. And you can see that the text here is not Arial and we want that to be Arial like we always do. So you would go up here to format and go to text style. And when that opens up, if it opens up, <laughs> uh, what we want to do is come over here and type AR and pick Arial and pick apply and close. And this should change. So you can see all of that has changed to Arial now when we do that. All right. So if that's not already Arial, you'll need to change that and fill all this stuff out. So that's how you make a simple 3D model. And there's a video that's going to help you with that. And so what you'll recall then is that we started with a bunch of 2D geometry. We made copies of it. We used press pull and we used the press pull and we gave it a value on the Z axis. And we were able to create our models. And then we went quickly here to the 3D rotate, press enter, pick right there, pick on our ellipse, type 90, and we started rotating everything around. And then we finished it off by doing some a union. We also extruded these two circles and moved them over to this guy after it had been rotated. And we used the subtract command right here to take those out. All right. so. Uh, the three assignments, the first three assignments are the tool slide, which you see on page 397. And you know how to do it now. Plus the book gives you a step-by-step. -step. If you want to try to do it without watching the video, you can sort of follow those directions there. Uh, the second project is 10.2. That's on page 402. And on that, you're going to make a 3D model of the bracket. And the third assignment is on page 404 and you're going to make a, a, a 3d model of the tool holder and you can see the step by step but there's also a video for all of this stuff in blackboard okay now the fourth assignment is the bearing assembly that you drew in chapter eight that you made a section view of you remember that and uh, so what we're going to do on this one and that's the next thing i'm going to show you and then i'm going to turn this over to you is how, how do you draw the 3D model of the flange bearing? And uh, so you already have a top view and a front view, but your front view is a section view of it. So I would make some copies of that. And so if you look over here, you've already got that profile drawn. And so it'd be pretty simple to just do a press pull and a press pull pick right in there drag that up and the height of that is supposed to be three and then pick in here and hold down shift oh we should be able to pick both of those at the same time and press escape i think the video shows you how to do it so we can just do a press pull on them one at a time if we want oh, i'm sorry we pick that go three and press enter pick press pull and pick right here and go up and that needs to be one and press pull over here, go up there, type one and press enter. And then you would union all of that stuff together. So you've got these three parts. So now they're all union. So that's great. That was, you can see how blazing fast it is to make that part. Okay. Now comes the harder part. And that is how do you put a countersunk hole in there? And how do you put counterboard holes in there? 
Well, what you need is you need to make shapes that look like this right here and move those onto this guy and subtract them out. And you need a shape that looks like a countersink, which is this shape right here. And you need to subtract it from right here from the big piece so that it leaves behind this object right here. So that's the challenge that's a little bit different in um, project 10.4 because you have to deal with a counterboard hole and a countersunk hole. Now they're not really that hard to do because you've already drawn them in two dimensions. So I want to show you the workflow real quick for making those. If you look over here, here's your counter sunk hole that you've already drawn. So if you were to copy the lines that comprise the counter sunk hole, looks like I just got the let me just do it this way. You have to be careful or you'll get that hatch pattern. And let's say that I make a copy of that and move it over here to the side like that. And then what I want to do is draw a line from the midpoint to the midpoint right here. And then I want to use the trim command. And I'm going to trim. And this is what I want my shape to look like. Let me get rid of this stuff. Okay, so what we need is half of the shape of a counter sunk hole. All right. The next thing we have to do is we're going to revolve this guy and we're going to revolve it into a solid. And so the revolve command is under the extrude command. So if you pick on the down arrow right here and you pick revolve and it says select the objects to revolve and you window all of that and you enter. And then it says specify the axis. Well, that would be the center axis. So you would pick at the endpoints right there, both, you know, this line right here. And then it says, type in the angle. It says specify the angle. So if I type 360 and enter, what it did is it made a shape that looks like a countersunk shape. There's only one problem with this. And I know it's a problem because when I move on to it, you see those lines, looks like a spider web kind of thing that's all on there or a radar station or something that tells me that that is not solid it's a it's a hollow model it's just a surface model and if I subtract a surface model from this solid model over here it doesn't leave a hole behind okay this needs to be a solid model and it's not and so when I did the, the revolve command I, I was missing a step so I'm gonna undo and go back to here before I revolve this, this shape that I have right here, I have to turn it into a region. And you know, I mentioned regions a minute ago that if you're gonna use the extrude command, you would have to region this first. If you're gonna use the revolve command, you need to region this shape first. So you go to your draw toolbar and pick on the down arrow and it's right there, region, or you can choose it from over here. Pick on region and it says select objects. You would window that shape and press enter and if it regions it will it will go it will turn solid like that now let me do an undo let me do another undo here's what would keep that from regioning if I had a gap like that in there and I tried to do a region and enter it would say zero regions created what this requires and what all these 3D models require is that your geometry is closed. And what that means is that at every corner, they're connected. If you have a microscopic opening, it will keep it from making a 3D model. Okay, you'll get a hollow model or you'll get a wireframe or something like that. So you have to make sure your geometry is closed. If you suspect that you have a microscopic opening at a corner, but it's so small you can't see it, there is a trick, and I've told you guys about this. Uh, it's called the fillet command. If you click on the fillet command, 
and you click on radius right here and when it says specify radius normally we're trying to get a, a filleted or a rounded corner and we type a radius in there but if you just press enter with the radius at zero and then you go pick this line for example and that line right there if you suspect that that was that that had a gap in it when you do a radius of zero it makes a square corner and it closes the corner so you could use the fillet command and you could choose multiple and you could keep your radius at zero and you could just keep working your way around your entire part and make sure that it's all closed. Now, another thing, sometimes when people are having real problems getting something to, uh, to, ro to revolve or extrude, uh, another option is to come up here to your polyline command and pick on polyline and draw from corner you know, start at this corner and go to that corner and go to that. Now you can see how wide that is. You need to pick on your width command and uh, set your width to like 0 0.001 or something like that. And uh, then try that again so that you have a very skinny polyline. So we do here, we go from here to here. Look, I'm still getting a really wide polyline. Let me look at that again. So I pick on that, start my first point and then go to width. And for my width, I want it to do 0.001 and enter. Now I should be able to draw it. Oh my gosh, it's still pretty big. Uh, so what I would want to do is go in and make sure that my width on that polyline is smaller. Usually you're not going to have that, that problem. But the point is you could draw a polyline and come all the way back to your start point, And that would give you a closed piece of geometry that you could extrude. All right, so back to making this revolution with a solid model. Uh, if we go to region and we window that entire thing and press enter, it fills in like that. That tells us it's a region. It even tells us right here one region was created. Now we go to revolve and we pick the region and then we press enter. And it says specify the axis start point. So this is the axis it's going to revolve around and we want it to be the center axis. So the center axis would run from that point to that point right there. And you can see as I move my cursor around, then just type 360 for 360 degrees. So it goes a full circle and press enter. And now when I move my cursor onto that, remember before it had all those lines on there and looked like a kind of a spider web thing. Now when I move on to it, those are not there. I know now that that is a solid, okay? So the next thing I would want to do is just rotate that. So I would pick right here and press enter. And when it asks me for the base point, I would pick at the center point right there. And then you see the red ellipse, I'm going to pick it. I'm going to type 90 because I want this, I need that to set to be sitting straight up, right? Okay, now what I want to do is move this right into that piece right there. So I'm going to use my move command. I'm going to pick that and press enter. And when it asks me for the base point, I'm going to move out here near the edge of the top. And when you do that, the center of that will light up and I want to snap to that center point right there. And I want to move it over here. And the same thing, I'm going to move near the edge of the top of this guy and that should make the center point light up when I do that. And there it is right there. Okay, so what I've got is I have that counter sink shape sitting inside my model right here. So I go to the subtract command and I pick this and then I press enter. And then it says select the objects to subtract. I pick that and then I press enter and that's what gives you your countersunk hole and if you look at the top view that hole should go all the way through all right okay now you're going to do the same thing with your counter board hole this is i'm sorry this is your counter board hole right here make a copy of it and trim it out clean it up 
So it will look like this right here. Then draw a line from, you know, midpoint. Oh, come here. Oh, my mouse is going slow all of a sudden. Uh-oh. <laughs> Sorry, my mouse is really moving weird and slow right now. I think I've pushed the graphics card too far. The point is, let me just escape out of that. Okay, so you would draw a line from the midpoint here to the midpoint here and trim it so it looks like this. And then what you would want to do <clears throat> is region that, make a region of it, and then revolve it. So you'd pick that and enter, and you would choose the endpoint of that line and the endpoint of that line, type 360. Okay, looks like my revolve got canceled. Press enter. And you want to snap here, and you want to snap there. That's your axis. And then type 360 and press enter. Then you would rotate that using 3D rotate. It would look like this right here. And then make a copy of it so you would have two of those. And then you would move those. You would put one at the center of this arc, and you would put one at the center of that arc right there. And then you would use your subtract command. So you pick subtract, you pick the big piece, you press enter. You would pick that, and you would pick that and press enter. And I don't know why this one didn't subtract, but that one did over there. So you can see what the counter uh, bore shape looks like. Let's try another subtract on this. There we go. And so that's what your flange bearing is going to look like. So I'm going to click on this. So just like before, you'll want to move the 2D objects away from your 3D object so that you can just see it and not see those uh, 2D objects in the background. You'll pick on the viewport and look right over here. And you need to choose a view, I mean a scale. Now, what you want to watch out for is obviously you can't have it off the outside the border. You can't have it into your title block or anything like that. So sometimes you have to double click and get into, into model space and drag your view around and get it centered in there. And then you have to play with the view, the scale a little bit. Let's say half scale. That looks like that's too small for this. So let's go back to one to one. Now, something I didn't tell you before is once you get your scale and you get the location of your model where you really like it and you don't want to mess that up, what you do is you come out here and double click in the gray, which will put you back into paper space. Then pick on your viewport so you can see the viewport is lit up and come right down here and you see that lock. Just pick the lock, <clears throat> pick on the lock. And what it does is it locks the scale and the location in your viewport. All right, so that is the overview of how you do this stuff in AutoCAD to create your 3D models. So next I'm going to go to Blackboard. So what you'll want to do when, when I finish up here today is go to Blackboard and click on the Chapter 10 module. And when you do that, this module here is going to open up and we have some short videos here. Like there's the, how to use the extrude command. Here's how to use press pull. Here's how to use union, subtract and intersect. Here's how to plot 3D objects. Uh, there's a whole bunch of videos here. And for the most part, that's covers kind of what I showed you guys. To set up your workspace, you can watch this one right here if you want to. Now, the next thing you're going to do is there are four assignment folders. And the first assignment is to draw the 3D model of the tool slide. And that's that project that's on the top of page go over here, 397. So I'm going to pick on that. And that's going to take me to the assignment. And it tells you, you know, what page to look at and all that. But here's an important part. You're going to open up a prototype called the 3D Tool Slide Exercise. Open that up, and what it's going to give you are, is the front, the top, and the right side view already drawn. Okay, so we're not going to use yours. We're going to use one 
that's already in the prototype. The reason we're doing that is that when you drew yours back in chapter four, you may not have drawn it very well. You, you might have open corners and you might have lines on top of lines and all that because back when you first drew the tool slide back in chapter four, <clears throat> you really didn't know yet what you were doing. So by opening up the prototype, <clears throat> we, we're pretty sure you're gonna get clean geometry that you can extrude and everything without any problems. Here is the video in step three. And uh, there's even some more help in this tool slide 3D PDF. And then you can print it as recommended right here. All right. Now, uh, then you'll go back to the chapter 10. And you'll pick on assignment number two, which is the 3D bracket. And there's a prototype for it. And so you'll just follow the same workflow until you get all of that done. Now, one of the things that I think that Ashley put a video in that shows us, I don't know if I have it right here, is uh, she shows a way to put all of your 3D models into one drawing so you can have all three uh, projects put together. And uh, that's not hard to do. It's, it's pretty easy. Let me go up one level here and put a... So what I'm talking about is these three assignments right here. This is your first assignment is to draw these three. I'm going to grade all three of those as one assignment. And then I'm going to grade that flange bearing, the one that requires all the revolutions, the revolve command. I'm going to grade that as a separate assignment. And so the way that you put these models all together is this. Once you have a model drawn in back in model space, you can pick on it and right click your mouse and go to clipboard and pick copy with base point. And then we'll ask you for a base point. You could pick it like at that corner right there. Then go and open another drawing that you want to copy that into. And when you open that drawing, go into model space and right click and go to clipboard and pick paste. And what you'll see is that you can paste the 3D model in. So this is what Ashley did here where she she pasted these three models all into the same drawing and then so she put all of them in, into the same viewport so I'm going to double click inside there and delete that one out that I copied right there and let's click on the viewport out here double click out here and pick on this it looks like she's got these at probably at half scale would be a good scale for those and kind of center those there. So you would probably write half scale in here. Now, you see what's happening when I scroll my mouse, how they're changing scale. So I, I'm going to center them. I'm going to double click out of here, get on my viewport, set that to half scale. Okay, so now they're zoomed into half scale. I would want to pick on this lock right here and lock that scale so that now when I zoom in and out, I can't actually change the scale of those guys and mess things up. Okay.